This is the Friday, December 16th, 2016 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is John Roach. John, welcome back. Thanks, Mike. Great to be here. We are glad to have you. We did not get to discuss the cotton market on the program. Tell us a little bit about where you think cotton could be headed. Cotton market's been pretty horizontal here for you know, the last month or so, and, and uh, uh, we think on strength you probably have to be moving out inventory uh, and, uh, and not to expect anything very exciting right now. Uh, to just expect more of a sideways kind of market. Now, do you think we are going to see 89, 90 million acres of soybeans this next year? We think that the, that the acreage will be up. Uh, wouldn't argue with uh, 90 million acres on soybeans. Wow. Uh, it's, it's bigger than where I thought, actually. As I was out doing meetings uh, in Illinois, and, and, uh, and I come away thinking we're going to see more bean acres than what I thought going into the meetings. Wow, and that's in north-central, central Illinois. They're Correct. talking about planting more beans. Correct, that's and that's corn country. Corn country. It's yeah. exactly right. So now, if corn country's planting beans, how much acreage, cotton acreage, do you think we're going to lose to soybeans? Would it be fairly substantial? It could be, uh, if the, particularly if the bean market uh, holds its relationship to both corn and cotton, I um, mean, that's it's going to encourage more beans for sure. Okay. We've got a number of questions here from our followers on social media, Facebook and Twitter. We've got one here from Tim in Minnesota. Tim's on Twitter at the $6 wheat guy. He's asking, will interest rates increasing have any effect on agricultural commodities? There's a possibility that it could have some impact, but it's more of a linkage impact. Uh, I think it's if the, the inter, as interest rates strengthen, the likelihood is the dollar stays strong or maybe even strengthens further. And the impact there is that it makes it harder to sell our commodities to overseas buyers. Yeah. And so uh, uh, higher interest rates uh, uh, puts a, a headwind in our face when it comes to marketing. Now, we talk a lot about our, our buyers over in Asia, Southeast Asia, you're a well-traveled, worldly man. When you look <laughs> at those economies, what, what do you see? Is there, given the strength in the U.S. dollar, do you think there still could be strength in that part of the world to purchase American goods even at, at a premium? You know, I, I just uh, I just spent a couple months traveling in Southeast Asia, and it's booming. And so, uh, yes, it's uh, uh, those economies are are really percolating, um, uh, and uh, the economic growth in Thailand, where I spent a lot of time, is not really uh, it's not growing quite as fast. But but it's still uh, you, it, it, there's a lot of economic activity. There's building going on. Uh, there's uh, uh, families that are growing. Uh, and so, uh, yes, I think that we have. Have uh, continued demand coming from all of those areas in Southeast Asia, uh, and I know that the the dollar and some of the other issues out there may tend to slow some things down a little bit. But I think in general that the that that area is looking for uh, an economic resurgence. You know, we're we're just coming up out of the recession that happened started back in 2008. I mean, here we are eight years later, and there's an optimism around that we haven't seen for quite a while. And so I think we have to think in terms of positive outlook as far as uh, markets are concerned with some headwind of the dollar strength, but, uh, but not enough headwind to, to slow the demand down. Very okay. Much. Now looking at the demand picture on the program, you said if you are planning on planting beans, especially additional acres of beans for 17, you're encouraged to go ahead and make some sales. There's a lot of folks out in the countryside looking around, not seeing a lot of things to be excited about. They're wondering, should we be pricing in corn, for 17, wheat for 17, beans for 18. How far out are you willing to hedge with these current prices? Well, the first thing that has to happen is the sale has to make sense to you. And so if, if you're looking at a price that you can make a margin of profit on and it looks like it, 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 it it's a, uh, with good yields would be a, a good sale, then I think that you have to take a look at it. And, and that's where we are with soybeans. Being able to sell beans up near 10 or in some areas a little over $10 a bushel, we think represents a pretty good opportunity. The government is forecasting bean prices next year to average 933. And so whenever we can sell well over the top of the price that the government's forecasting, we know that makes good sense. We also know we're into that period of time when we have beans and South America does not. And, and we're at the same time when China wants to, to be a bigger buyer than anybody figured because they're trying to get ahead of the dollar strength. So we've got a lot of things in the, on the positive side with beans right now, and that's the reason we want to sell into the strength of 
of the on the old crop as well as start on 17. Mm -hmm. But to go out and make sales on corn for 17, to go out and make sales for wheat on 17, I don't think so. Uh, I, I, you know, there's still opportunities here. The northern hemisphere is the bigger producing uh, area for corn and, and wheat. And so let's give the, the, the market an opportunity. Let's, let's give the weather worries an opportunity to give us some better uh, price levels. So we're very slow sellers of 17 crop on wheat uh, or corn. We are making sales on strength in order to cover cash flow needs, okay. in order to get your storage situation uh, straightened out. We had a corn sell signal this week uh, that lasted for two days. Old crop corn. Old crop corn, but we didn't make any sales on new crop okay. corn. Okay, okay. Yeah. And wheat, have you had sell signals? Have there been any selling opportunities in wheat for the there, last six months? There really have been. In fact, okay. is we, we had uh, Minneapolis wheat, uh, uh, give it, it, where the, the higher level of protein is, is where the greatest uh, uh, demand seems to be because the world had a big crop and the protein levels are low. And so we think that, that we'll continue to have some selling opportunities, uh, but they're just not going to be big prices. Okay. They're, they're not going to be lots higher. Uh, uh, unless something comes along. And in, in the case of wheat, it's very cold in, the, in North America. It's also very cold in Russia right now. So we are potentially uh, having some, uh, some winter kill losses out there. We won't know that for a while yet, but potentially uh, we could see some reductions and we could change the stats on wheat. Yes. Uh, too early to sell, but there, there are some reasons here that, that we might have a little different kind of market out forward than we have today. All right, change the narrative. Coming out of a political season, narrative is what counts, doesn't it? I like it? that, I like that. We've got uh, our next question, actually coming right back to what we're still talking about here, David in Kansas on Twitter at uh, Sec Farms Dave. He wants to know what is the the best way to hedge the expected tightening of the corn soybean ratio for 17 I'm not sure how to do that I mean okay. uh, uh, I mean you can certainly uh, go out and and, uh, and 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 buy beans if you want to bet on the on the on the beans continuing to outperform the corn mm -hmm. or if you want to go the other direction buy corn sell beans uh, but uh, otherwise I think what's important is to recognize in your farming operation which market makes sense to make sales in Okay. And, and the extra strength we're getting in beans relative to corn tells me that on, when you get strength in the market, you make some sales on soybeans. You do the marketing that you can do uh, and don't ignore it. All right. Do the marketing that you can do. Our next question from John in Kansas, who's on Twitter at, at 470 John, 4720 John. Marketing we can do. He Might wants be a to John know. Deere guy. Uh, that's my guess, okay. yeah. He wants to know, how can we manage the large basis for corn, wheat, and milo that we're seeing in, in central Kansas? Talking about doing the marketing we can do for a lot of these folks where they had big yields all year long, how can they cope with that? The basis values are weak, uh, and, uh, and uh, what you have to do is you just have to have a, some patience here because basis tends to strengthen as we move into the spring of the year. And so uh, you just have to be patient here and, uh, and keep track of it and make sure when you get some basis movement that you're there to take advantage of it. Okay. Get those tarps. You know, cover up those piles. Mm. Uh, final question. John in Missouri has a gaze into your crystal ball type question. He wants to know what commodity is the sleeper of 2017? What, what is out there lurking that could surprise us all in 2017? That's a really good question. It is. That's just a really good question. Uh, I think it's corn. I think what we could wake up to at some point here is smaller corn acres, a little bit of a reduced uh, yield situation because we have a little bit of weather concerns and we could, uh, we could look out to the demand and say, how are we going to satisfy this increase in demand? The, the world demand increases at 2.8% uh, at per year on the average. And, and so, how long, looking back over how far? Some 2003. Wow, okay. Okay, so it's a, it's a longer term process. Beans increase at the rate of 4% per year. And all you have to do is take a look and say, well, we're eating up almost all of a monster crop out there. And now, oh, guess what? We need another couple percent more crop next year. We're not going to get much in acreage anywhere in the world because how do you plow up more ground when your profit levels are so tight? So acreage is going to say relatively fixed 
uh, or total acre is going to stay relatively fixed, uh, and so we're going to have to find more yields out there, and that means really good weather. So uh, I think if I were going to bet on the sleeper, it'd be corn. It'd be corn, and let's say we, well, so with 90 million acres of beans, your corn acre adjustment, you'd be at 86 million acres? Yeah, take 85? off maybe, take three to four million off from last okay. year. So 89, roughly 90 to 90, call it. With a little bit of a two bushel below trend line yield, a weather issue. Just, you just come down to trend line trend yield. Trend line yield. Just come down to trend line yield. Are we at 550? I mean, crystal ball gazing. We put a uh, dollar, dollar plus onto this market? We could. Okay. We could. That, that would be the sleeper. We could. If that's the sleeper. I'm not betting on that. Don't, okay. Don't, 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 don't get me wrong. I'm not betting on that. I'm just, I'm just saying that you don't have to have much change in the fundamental tables on acreage and yield, and it has a big change when you compare it to the demand level that's out there. And remember, we're going to continue to have demand stay strong because of these cheap price levels really in all likelihood for the next three or four months. And, and we're, our exports out of the United States right now are running 4% over the pace that was anticipated. And that's with beans taking all of the shipping space. If South America starts shipping more beans and we're able physically to export more corn, are, do you anticipate corn exports then to stay very strong into you know, March, April, May? Yes. Okay. Yes, I think corn exports stay strong. Wow. All right. Well, John Roach, you give us something to look forward to potentially in 2017. And uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Thank you very much, Mike. I enjoyed right. it. Merry hey. Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Join us again next week when Angie Setzer will sit at the market to market table and watch the broadcast portion of our show where we'll take a look at how a holiday flower is being used as a teaching tool. So until then, thanks for watching or listening. I'm Mike Pearson. Have a great week.